Hey, it's Andy with Igniter, and today we're talking about four After Effects plugins that you need to be using. So I'm here with Trent. Hi there. He's a motion graphic artist here at Igniter, and he does amazing work. You're very kind. Um, get to work alongside him and just see all of the magic he does in After Effects. And so we thought, hey, we want to get him in to talk to you guys about his favorite After Effects plugins. So Trent, as a if I'm a new person, uh, in kind of like a baby, in, yeah, a like a person? like a new person jumping into After Effects for the first time. Oh, you just first time using, baby After Effects. using After Effects. Okay. <laughs> No, just go with it, man. Go with it. Go with that stuff. What are kind of the, some of the essential plugins that would be great to know as a new baby learning After Effects? All right. So the first thing, before we go any further, is I need to say the Trap Code Suite from Red Giant Software is awesome. I use Trap Code Suite uh, plugins in just about everything I do, from particular to form to mirror. So much goodness. If you buy the whole suite, you get it about half price. Mm. So look into it. Maybe you don't want to buy it right away, but look into it. Okay. Powerful set of plugins, but it does cost a little bit of money it does to cost add because to it is that. Yeah. third party. So uh, After Effects has some built-in uh, effects that are actually pretty powerful in and of themselves, uh, and you can do a lot, but it is sometimes intimidating to kind of figure out how to use those. So what do you think are like your top four, and mm -hmm. uh, how mm -hmm. would you uh, see yourself using them, um, and how powerful they are in some of the work that you do? So my first... Plug in my first effect, not a plug in, it's an effect, is fractal noise. Fractal noise has myriad uses from clouds to star fields to flowy streaks and water. It's great. So, fractal noise is definitely really, really powerful and just native to After Effects. I mean, it's right. already included. And if you combine it with other effects, then there's even more power. Yeah. So, what's another one? Another one is the gradient wipe. So, the gradient wipe is uh, it, it looks at the white and black information and all the gray in between of an image and allows you to use that to reveal or take away parts of another image. So you can use it to help get rid of bright spots, get rid of dark places. You can use it as uh, a, like a wipe. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's called gradient wipe, mm -hmm. but you don't have to use it as a wipe. You just can. Now, mm -hmm. if you're doing a transition from something like water to uh, water, so you want to get a loop of water, then you can use your gradient wipe to transition the water on top of the water. It uses it organically to change the image so it doesn't look like a hard cut or just a fade. Mm -hmm. It uses the color information or the brightness information inside that water to actually do the transition. Yeah, so it's using the information from another layer Mm -hmm. to generate sort of the uh, fade in and out using different uh, uh, brightness values, qualities of that of yeah. that layer, which is where fractal noise could have come in um, into play in utilizing a fractal noise layer as the layer that you're getting the gradient wipe information from. Correct. All right, so tell us about another one. Another one is set matte. It uses different parts of an image, color or alpha as well, to create opacity and transparency. A lot of these, so set matte and gradient wipe, kind of do some of the same things, mm -hmm. but combining them up can help create extra layers to your effects, can help you get rid of parts of your information in your image that you don't want, and you can use, say, uh, alpha channel from one image or luminance brightness from one image as the matte for another image mm -hmm. to cut the image out, like a cookie cutter. Yeah, so just to, so everybody's kind of following along, uh, the alpha chan channel uh, of one layer is the transparency information in that, right. in that uh, layer. And then uh, a matte would be what you're telling uh, After Effects is supposed to be transparent in a layer that doesn't have a transparency, right? Right. So um, you're using set matte to, to use... To pull the information <laughs> from one place and yep. put it in another place. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, final After Effects uh, effects native to the program that you love and everyone should be using is the beam effect. The beam effect, of course, you can make lightsabers and you can make laser beams out of it, but you can also use it to create uh, 3D shapes like boxes. Mm. Um, you have to hook up some things with expressions, which we can talk about in another episode, maybe. Oh, <laughs> fingers crossed. Uh, but the beam effect. Uh, just draws a line across the screen between two points. And uh, there was one case where I had a 
uh, stalk of grass or some kind of foliage mm -hmm. in front of a countdown and I wanted it to kind of wiggle back and forth in front of the number, maybe like this. And I was able to uh, track one point here, track one point here, back and forth, made a beam, and Bob's your uncle. <laughs> so Actually, Bob is not my uncle. He's my father-in-law. But uh, we will as well be as. right back after these messages. Hey, you don't need these wipes. You can make your own wipes in after a Hey Trent, thanks for being here. Thanks Andy. I had so much fun. <laughs> hey at Igniter, we make motion graphics in After Effects and we want you to be able to customize those or jump in and see how we've done things. And so we offer After Effects project files uh, with certain memberships on our website. So you can click on that link to go check those products out. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content, hopefully with Trent. And uh, definitely comment below with any questions you have, but also what your favorite After Effects effects are are, uh, and we'll see you next time.